This video was created to guide you through understanding how to properly set up your mill one so that you may quickly start to independently cut precision parts on your machine. To start, there are many ways to mount the material that you wish to cut to the milling bed. The three that we recommend are C-clamps, generally used to attach the ends of small to medium sized materials to the bed. Double-sided carpet tape, a very strong form of double-sided tape which has adhesive on both sides and works great for attaching thinner pieces of material to the bed. And finally, a low-profile, heavy-duty drill press vise, which is essentially for milling thicker pieces of soft metals. Despite reducing the vertical range of your machine, the vise can be placed on the bed and clamped in any orientation which is most convenient to be used for rigid milling. If you have fully assembled your machine by following our assembly videos or reading the assembly manual, the last physical step you'll need to complete is to make sure that the mounted router on your mill one is level to the milling bed. To do this, we recommend getting a spare piece of scrap wood which is at least an eighth of an inch thick and approximately the same size as the bed, as well as the largest end mill that you have available to you. In this case, we'll be using a quarter inch two flute end mill. The idea is that once you've attached the scrap wood to the bed, preferably using double-sided carpet tape, and you've inserted the bit into the router, you can run a program which will cut the scrap wood flat. This milled surface will now become the new surface you'll attach your material to, since it will now be level in relation to your cutting tool. Be sure to securely stick the tape to your scrap material and firmly press the board onto your cleaned milling bed, so that it doesn't move around or become detached later on. If you've already installed a bit in your router, be sure to remove it using the tools provided with your router. And if you are using an adapter and need to remove it, an easy way to do this is to angle the bit while it's inside the collar and pull the adapter out. Otherwise, you can simply remove the retaining collar nut off the end of the router you may now insert and tighten the larger end mill into place. Now before going to your computer, there are some CNC fundamentals that you should know in order to better understand what we'll be doing next. The first thing you must understand is that when you're trying to cut something on your mill one, or any CNC machine for that matter, there's a three-step process that you'll generally always have to follow. The first step is making the object you'd like to cut, whether that's a two-dimensional drawing or three-dimensional model. If you're looking for ways to do this, we recommend Inkscape and Onshape for making your 2D and 3D files respectively, since both these programs are free and relatively easy to use. The second step in this process is turning your created model into a file that a CNC machine can understand. These programs are called CAM programs and they generally output G-code files. If you've created a 2D drawing, then we recommend using MakerCAM to create your G-code file, and if you've created a 3D model, then we recommend using Kirimoto. Both of these programs are also free to use and are easily accessible through your computer browser. The last step in this process is sending your G-code file to your machine. To do this, we use G-code sending software, and the software that we would recommend using is Universal G-code Sender, or UGS for short, since, once again, it's a freely downloadable software that's easy to use but still fully capable of handling most tasks you send it. So just to review, 
we have three steps. We start by making or downloading our vector drawing or model that we plan to cut. Then we use the appropriate CAM software to tell the machine what we want it to do and how to do it. And from these settings, the CAM software will generate a G-code file. After this, the last step is using a G-code sender to stream the G-code file to the machine, allowing the machine to cut what we wanted. Now that you understand the three-step process for running your CNC machine, we can move on. Going over to your computer, we'll need to access two things through the Resources tab of our website. First, you should go to our GitHub page and find the Platform Leveling G-Code in the MIL1 initialization folder. Select the quarter-inch end mill file only if you have a quarter-inch end mill. Otherwise, select the eighth-inch end mill file for any other smaller sized bits. To download the G-Code file, click on the file then click the RAW button on the right side of the gray toolbar. Once on the RAW page, simply right-click anywhere on the page and click Save Page As. Then you'll be able to save it wherever you want on your computer. Secondly, head back to the Resources tab on our website and click the link to the G-Code Senders page. On that page, you'll be able to click on the Universal G-Code Sender heading, which will bring you to the GitHub page for UGS. There are many options you will be presented with as to which version you could download. In our case, Gerbal 1.1v is only compatible with the nightly builds of UGS, so you'll have to download one of the two of them. These builds are more up-to-date versions of UGS, however, they've not been fully tested. Keep in mind that although they have more features and bug fixes, they also have the potential to have additional bugs, so install the nightly builds at your own discretion. In this case, we're downloading the classic GUI nightly build due to its simple layout and similarity to previous releases. Since it's a nightly build, you'll be warned again about potential bugs when you open it. It is at this point that your MIL-1 should be powered on and plugged into one of the USB ports on your computer. We'll explain what most sections of the G-Code Sender do section by section. First, ensure that you've set the baud rate to 115,200 and the firmware to Gerbil. Once done, you should be able to use the Refresh button, then click the drop-down arrow next to Port to select the auto-detected port. Click Open. You'll notice some machine commands that scroll through the command window. This is the machine starting up. You should see that the machine status is currently idle. This will change to active once you run a job. You'll also notice columns for work position and machine position. Machine position is the machine's absolute coordinates and aren't too important. What's more important is the work position coordinates since these are relative. This means that the work position coordinates can be set and reset, and this is useful for setting the origin of your workpiece, also known as the starting point of your cut. We'll talk more about this soon. Below that is the section for uploading and sending files. We'll also use this in just a bit. There's also the machine control tab, used for manually moving the machine, the console, which you can type machine commands into, and it indicates the current machine commands being run, And finally, there's still more options in the Settings tab, which we won't need to touch for now. Back to the Machine Control tab, we can see the option to enable keyboard movement. You should be able to either use the arrow keys or the buttons in the tab to move the head of your mill one once you set the feed rate to at least 800. If you're more comfortable with inches, you can also toggle the units of movement. Play around with each axis and get a feel for how they move. Now, since we designed the bed leveling G-code to have its origin at the front left corner of the machine, you should now prep the machine by moving the head there. The two most common origin points for a CNC machine are the top center of the piece or the front left. To get the head to the right position, move the X and Y axes to the limits of each axis, and the Z axis so the end mill is nearly touching the surface of the wood. 
You can now browse to where you downloaded the platform leveling G code file. Once open, you should be able to visualize the file to see where your machine will be making cuts and where the end mill currently is relative to the cuts it will be making. If you notice that the end mill isn't at the corner of the cutting surface, this indicates you haven't yet zeroed all of the axes. You can do this by clicking Reset Zero in the Machine Control tab. As previously mentioned, this will reset all of the work position coordinates and set the origin for cutting. You'll be able to see this change once you visualize the cut again. Before starting, the last step will be to turn on your router. You should now be ready to go. Hit send in the UGS and watch as your mill one comes to life. If you notice any grinding noises during the program, it shouldn't be an issue. This is just the machine moving to the limits of the axes in order to ensure that a level surface the size of the build volume is produced. Depending on the bit size, this job should be complete in 20 to 40 minutes. Once completed, you will now have a reliable surface to mount to. In the next video, we'll go more in-depth on how to use Kirimoto to generate G-code for your own models by camming and milling an introductory model we like to call Sea and Sheep. Until next time.